two. <laughs> Hi, Flosstube! Second attempt at this video. I had to go deal with some wild and crazy kids this morning. Um, hope everyone is having a good Stitchy week. It is Sunday, December the 20th. It has been a very crazy week for me. Um, had a lot going on this week. Had a fundraiser for my dad's political campaign. Had Christmas parties for the kids. Had the last week of school. Had just general life stuff happening. Um, Friday night, Teresa went with her Girl Scout troop and spent the night at Cowboys Stadium. And on Friday night, my husband and I took David to go see Star Wars. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but oh my goodness, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. It was awesome. Yeah, totally go see it. It's just, oh, awesome. Gonna go see it again, probably when my siblings are in town. Um, this upcoming week, of course, is probably going to be very, very busy. I'm very glad for my modified rotation. Stitching has been kind of wonky this past week just because of everything else that's been going on in life. So if I was doing my normal rotation right now, I would be so, so far behind. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad I'm not. Um, but, you know, I think there's only one day this week where I don't currently have something planned. Um, tomorrow, or today... After I do this video and stuff, Teresa and I are going to go out and finish Christmas shopping. Um, tomorrow she has an all-day Girl Scout camp where she's going to earn like four or five badges um, over the course of the day. Then my siblings are coming into town, which I'm excited about. We've got family parties. We've got Christmas Eve. We've got Christmas Day. We've got all sorts of craziness in the upcoming week. So yeah, we'll see how stitching goes and how life goes and all that sort of thing. So um, I thought I would go ahead and get started. I think it's probably gonna be a shorter video today. That's what happens when I have the modified rotation schedule I'm noticing. Don't worry, when the year of starts starts and I get back to my normal rotation, my videos are gonna be super duper long. Yay. All right, let's get started with the Q&A. Carolina ask, S asked, <laughs> Did I find my small hoop for working on my Santa for my Winter Wonderland stitch long? Poor Santa. He has gotten not, he has got, he has not gotten uh, caffeine. I have a bottle back. I was out of bottles last week. The caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. Santa hasn't gotten a lot of love this week just because of all the things that I, when I'm working on other stuff, that's the one that just, if I don't get to something, it's the one I'm not getting to. Um, but I did find the hoop for it, which is good because ironically, I don't mind working in hand on larger pieces. I feel like I can get a better grasp on the fabric and not put my hand in wonky positions that gets it cramped up and stuff. The smaller piece, the, you, you only have so much that you can like maneuver your hand to get it to work. And I just, I don't like use, doing it as much. So yes, I did find the hoop, um, which has been very, very helpful. So yay! Um, Febby Marsh asked, how do I spell Teresa's name with or without an H? It is without an H. Um, we, it is my middle name that we gave her for her first name and we don't use the H because with the H, I know there are Teresa's out there with the H, but when I see it, I, I always make sound, it always reads to me like Theresa instead of Teresa. So no H. Um, and by the way, let me mention, thank you everyone for the sweet compliments on my last video when she was a part of it. She was so excited to read all of the happy comments um, and all of the, she does look like me. When she was younger, she looks more like her dad. Um, but as she's gotten older, she's definitely looking more and more like me. She definitely has most of my facial expressions down very well as well. Um, but yeah, she would very much appreciate all of the likes and all of the compliments and all of the comments. And I explained away the couple of dislikes in the video of some people just like to give dislikes for giving dislikes. So, you know, she got over that. So anyway, back to the Q&A. Um, Catherine Whelan asked, at the beginning of each month next year, because of my rotation and all of my plans, could I be working on up to eight pieces in a given day? Yep. How will I do that? I, like I've said before in my videos, um, my kids are both school aged. I'm a stay at home mom. So when they're at school, I have several hours in the day where I can get chores as well as stitching done. When they are home, um, homework help is needed. We spend some family time together, but they also like to decompress without being around other people and I don't have to hover over them and watch them all the time. And then when they go to bed, I've got time after they go to bed. So I can do it. I hope. We'll see how it goes. 
Um, Beverly Evander asked, how do the Stitch Mania cells work? Stitch Mania, um, and I'll put a link to the group below, which I woke up this morning and had like 20 new requests for membership, which is great. Welcome aboard. But that was a whole lot of requests and I'm wondering if someone posted something somewhere because holy moly, got a whole lot of requests, which is fine. Um, just remember, if you request to join Stitch Mania, I will be checking your profile. And if you don't have anything Stitchy related, or if you don't have an obvious link somehow to the crafty world, um, or to the, what's going on in Stitch Mania, I'm not going to let you in. So, um, and Garrett is the same way when he goes and checks them. So, you know, send us a message if you don't have anything Stitchy related visible on your public profile so we can make sure you get you in. Anyway, back to the question, the actual question. Stitch, Garrett and I have taken the philosophy that stitch alongs are supposed to be fun and we look at them as opportunities for all of us to work together on a common theme um, to cheer each other on. We only have two stitch alongs that are designer related um, and that's the Brooks Books and the Chatelaine stitch along. But even then it's just we all work on the same designer not on the same piece, but it's the same designer. So Chatelaine Stitch Long is all for Chatelaine pieces. Brooks Books is all for Brooks Books. Almost every other Stitch Along that we have in Stitch Mania are themes. Um, we've got, you know, New Year, New Start, which of course is the cliche, obvious, everyone do new starts for the new year. But we have like February is We Love Stitching. And it is, you can either stitch on something that's Valentine's related or stitch on a piece that you love or you're stitching for something for someone that you love or you can manipulate, you know, it's not easy being green. If it has one speck of green in it, you can use it. If it's an Anne of Green Gables piece, you can use it. We are very lax about people joining in on the stitch alongs because <clears throat> I know there are other stitch alongs out there that are... It is this specific piece. You must start it this day. That's the point of the stitch line. And that's fine. If you, I, I have no problem with that. Have fun. Um, but we, with the exception of New Year, New Start, um, and Stitch Mania in May, which are both supposed to, the, the intention of both of those is to have new starts, um, we are totally fine with however you want to tell the story of why your piece fits in the stitch along, feel free. No, we don't all work on the same piece. No, we're not expected to start a brand new piece every stitch along. No, we don't expect you to finish the piece by the end of the month. You can work on one piece. You can be like me. You can work on four. There's other people who I've seen that have worked on tons more than four in the given month. It's really just a find some piece that you have that fits in the theme somehow. And if you don't have something that fits in the theme, you can still join in to cheer the rest of us on. We are very, very lax and laid back. And if you ever have, you know, questions of how something can fit in, Jessie Marie has done fantastic stories of how all of her pieces would fit in in a given month. I know Adele has done some great ones for how her pieces fit in. I can help you find a reason of help a piece fit in. There, we'll help you. No problem. So hope that answers the question how they work. And there is a new theme at the beginning of each month. Um, most stitch alongs last for a month. There are a few that are one day stitch alongs. The uh, May the 4th be with you on May 4th is a Star Wars stitch along and it's just for that one day. Um, September 1st is a Harry Potter stitch along because that's the first day of school at Hogwarts. And so that's a one day thing. Um, then Chatelaine and Brooks Books and Year of Starts are all year long, but everything else is a month, pretty much. Just look on the events tab under the Stitch Mania group and you can see what's up there. Uh, Tammy Neal asked if I use the same needle throughout a project. I try to. I don't always. I mean, I have, and I should have brought it upstairs, but I didn't. Um, ne next, I have a needle minder on every one of my projects. You guys have seen that. I don't leave needles on my pieces because, you know, it may be a while before I get back to that piece and I don't want to have as many needles as I have projects. Um, but I have a little blue magnetic box thingy that has a bunch of different needles on it that I have used for bunches of different things or that are just there and I've never used them, but I just haven't found another place for them. So I try to use the same needle each time. Sometimes I have like three or four that are pretty much similar needles that I use a lot. Um, she went on to ask if I use a different needle for beading and the answer to that is yes. My, my beading needles, I was about to say my 
beetle needles. <laughs> My beading needles are much thinner so that they can go through the bead. Um, and most of those that I use currently, I got from Mill Hill Kits because Mill Hills usually send a beading needle and those work fine. They're just much, much skinnier to push through the bead. Um, let's see. Next question. Brown Eyed Girl asked, um, how do I frame my pieces? Um, speaking of, I picked up my daughter's uh, piece for Christmas this week. Um, sh they wrapped it for me at the store, so I don't have it to show you guys. I'll show it to you after Christmas. Um, so maybe next week's video I'll show it to you. Uh, but it turned out gorgeous. I am going to try to use, for the majority of my larger pieces, to actually have a framer do them because it's just so much better. Um, for the one that I did for my husband, um, it was a cut down to size and then folded over piece. I didn't lace it. It's an inexpensive frame from Walmart and it didn't really set up well for me to lace it in the back, but I have laced before. A couple of the bigger pieces that I framed myself with a mat and all that stuff, I laced it in the back and that worked just fine. Um, my husband's is right now. It's just a cut down and, and fold over because I was lazy, but it's okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Beverly Vanger also asked, what does one over two, two over two, et cetera mean? Okay, I've seen this question in a couple of different places, not just on my, but like in a couple of the Facebook groups and a couple other places. One over two or two over two is telling us the number of threads that we use if floss over how many holes that we go on our fabric. It's most appropriately used, that language is most appropriately used when you're working on an even weave or on a linen, because those, the way you look, if you have, let me see, uh, where's a piece I can show? Let's see. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see these, but this is, oh no, you're not gonna be able to see it. Um, on an even weave or on a piece of, of linen, um, the holes, it kind of looked like a tic-tac-toe board to make, whereas on Ada, it is just the one hole that we use. But what is one hole on Ada can be up to nine holes in a, in a job or in an even weave or a uh, linen. So 14 count Ada is the same size as 28 count Jobelin if you are stitching over two holes on the Jobelin um, or the even weave or the linen or whatever. I'm going to say Jobelin probably because that's the one I use most often, but it's not limited to that. Um, and the way you look at them when you are when you move to an even weave or linen, like I said, it looks like a tic-tac-toe board and you're crossing the diagonals tic-tac-toe. That's how I always, that's how I worked into getting it to work for me. So when you say something like two over two, that means you're using two threads of floss um, to go over two threads on to make basically the, the normal size X on your fabric. Um, when I say something like one over one, which is what I do a lot on my skin for various pieces, it is one piece, one thread of floss, and I'm just using it on one thread. Oh, I'm just doing it over one hole on the um, fabric, which means four little stitches, four little full Xs equals one normal size X. It like divides the piece up into four. It's easier to show in, and I'm not sure if I'm even explaining this well, because like I said, it's early and the caffeine hasn't kicked in, but that's kind of what it means. Um, so if someone says they are working two over two, they have two skein, they have two threads of floss and they're working it over two holes, pretty standard stuff. It's when you start getting, you know, one over one or one over two or some of the, two over two is pretty much the standard. Um, the rest are kind of depends on the situation sort of thing. I hope that answers the question. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. Like I said, it's a lot easier to show someone and see it and it's hard to do on the videos. So, um, anyway, it's kind of dark in here today. It's all gray and yucky outside. Blech. Uh, Wink and Lewis asked how I organize all of my new starts. Um, okay. What I did to figure out my new starts, I first started going through all of my patterns and my magazines and my books and I picked out what I wanted to do and wrote them all down. And then I sit down and I pick up a pattern, 
whether it's in a magazine or a book or it's just a regular pattern or it's on my computer, wherever it is, and I look at what the requirements are. I see what the size of the piece uh, is supposed to be stitch-wise so I can figure out what size fabric I need, and I look at the flosses. Is it DMC? Is it Gentle Arts? Is it Weeks? Do I need to order anything for it? Can I substitute floss out for it with Mohs or anything else like that? Um, and I kit each one up one at a time. I will see a piece, okay, here's piece X. Okay, let me pick out the fabric for it. Do I need to find any floss for this? Or do I need to order anything for this floss, beads, etc.? Put it in a bag with the name on the bag, put the bag to the side. So the only thing that I do with the full list ahead of time is to get the name, I decide all of the pieces that I'm wanting to kit up at once. So I have them all, so I'm not just saying, okay, now let me look through the next one. Let's do this. No, I have my list of like 31 for January of all the pieces that I'm doing, and I'll do that process for each one. What do I need? Okay, let's pick a fabric. Okay, do I need to order anything? And go from there. I use the X-Stitch app for making my shopping list. There's a shopping list feature on there. You can type in what you need. Um, so I'll type in if I need to order flosses or what may possibly be needed. Um, and uh, I will also use the X-Stitch app to put the piece in there as a kitted under the journal and as kitted. And I'll put notes in the project notes, set, like I'll write what, uh, I'll type in the linen section, what the linen is that I'm gonna use. Um, so I remember when I can tell you guys when I do my videos. And then if I have any notes on the bottom, like if it's in a magazine, I'll put what issue in the magazine of the magazine it's in, um, in the project notes. If I'm gonna substitute out floss, I'll indicate there what I'm gonna substitute out. Um, and I just, I go through that and do it you know, I may do it all at once. I may do a few at a time. It kind of depends. I did all of the February ones this week. They're all kitted up and I have placed the order for the flosses that I needed. Um, so, you know, I, it took a couple of days, but I just went through and that's how I did it. Once it's in the bag, um, which is her next part of the question, what do I do with the bags once they're done? I have a couple of boxes over here on the side that are big, you know, sterilite, plastic boxes, like storage boxes, and the bags right now are all just in there. There's no rhyme or reason to it. it. So anytime when I get back to my normal rotation, I'll be going through and pulling out, you know, I'll have my list of what I'm going to work on for that week and I'll go through and I'll pull out the bags that I need. Um, after the new year, because I'm not going to finish up the organizing this room because right now I've got on the other side of this computer screen, I have all of the boxes and stuff for wrapping. <laughs> Because we're doing all of the Christmas wrapping and stuff up here. Um, after the new year, I will be getting uh, the rest of this room put together. And I intend on having a better organizational system for my my kits. Because um, I'm going to be having a lot by the time the year of starts is over. I'm not going to have 366 because several of my 366 starts are parts of one piece. Um, but... Um, I, I will have a lot and the bags are just putting them in big boxes just isn't going to work. It works for now. It's not going to work by the, this point next year. So I, I, when I have that or better organization system set up, I will let you guys know. But right now it's just in a bag, in a box and I go through the box. Nothing fancy. Um, da -da 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 -da. Novice Stitcher asked how I feel about working with four strands instead of two. I don't. Um, there's one piece that I have, the, uh, and you'll guys will see it when I do my next uh, Winter Wonderland Stitch Along update, my, uh, Skaters Village tree skirt that has at various points where I use four threads or five threads or even six threads, um, for various portions of the piece because it is so massive. I, I don't like, I mean, for that piece it's okay because the, the, the fabric is big enough and it's for the piece that I'm do it's a massive tree skirt it needs that sort of dimension but on my normal pieces that I work on that would make it too bulky um I, I will use either one strand or two strands sometimes three if the piece calls for it a lot of the mill hill kits will call for three strands instead four is too much four gets too bulky for and if you're looking at doing four because of coverage purposes um the only floss that I have an issue with coverage with, and I don't even ha consider it that big of an issue, is what a lot of people have talked about before with DMC Black and Anchor Black. And Anchor Black apparently covers, provides better coverage with two strands of floss than DMC does. 
It may not hurt to look at other floss brands if that's the issue. But no, I generally only stick with either one strand for certain things or two. Four will be way too bulky. So those my Q&A for the week. Thanks everyone as always for asking your questions. If you have any questions you want me to answer or that I haven't answered before, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I will answer them next week. All right, my whips. I only three whips. I'm down to three. I, I will probably work on Exploding Tardis again on Christmas Day or when, if I don't actually... Uh, I'll say it. Whenever I watch the Christmas special for Doctor Who, um, I will set it to record on Christmas Day. I don't know if I will actually watch it on Christmas Day. If I don't, whenever I sit down to watch that the Christmas episode, I will stitch an exploding TARDIS again. But otherwise, it's back in the bag or in the box for now. I've got my three that I'm working on that I'm trying to finish up for this year. Uh, first one is Garrett's Design. And I showed you guys how I started this last week. This is the needle book for his Snow White collection. And here is where I am at this point after this week. You know, lighting's awful today. Um, it's on 32 Lugana in sand from Picture This Plus. This, so the, the border is all done. This one is almost completed. This just the castle, a little bit more in the castle will be done. And then I have some parts to put in here and it'll be done. I would be shocked if I don't have this finished within the next couple of days. Really, it doesn't take super long. So there is that. And then I'll just need to get the instructions from Garrett on how to actually put together a needle book because I've never done that before. Um, and once I get those instructions, I'll put it together and yay team. Next is my Zodiac sampler from Clouds Factory. I am almost done. I'm so close. I have two of the corners done and a third almost completed. All right, let me scoot back here. Let me see if you guys, there we go. So here's where we are. I've got the two upper corners done. And now I've got the third down here almost done. And then I have the fourth corner to do. That's all I've got left. Let's see, I'll show you guys a little bit closer up here, the corners. I really do like the corners. I like how it squares off the piece. So maybe I'll get this one done this week too. Who knows? We will see what happens. But this is of course done on 32 Belfast and Black Magic from Under the Sea Fabrics using flosses and silks from Mohs Sale, as I have said many, many times. <laughs> And then the last piece, I'm almost done with this. I am picking up the clock mechanisms today when I go out because it is so close to being done. The Doctor Who clock. I'm on 12. That's all I have left to do is 12. And even on 12, I don't have a whole ton left. I've already started on his skin. Um, when, when I've worked on this, I have tried to do all of one color at the same time for each piece. So I've got like... In this section here, there's black, but I'm waiting until I get the skin in so I can do the black for the eyes. But I've got his face, his eyes, his hair, then his shoes, and this little part in it, and that's all I gotta do. That's all I gotta do. Isn't that awesome? See, I can't, I think I was on not, I think I was on eight when I saw, showed you guys this. So there's eight, there's nine, there's 10, there's 11, and then there's 12. What I really like, and one thing I have noticed, is if you look, let me see if I can get this a little bit closer so I can show. Each doctor's outfit or each doctor period has something from the previous doctor in him. So, you know, here's doctor number one. Well, doctor number two has the same color jacket. Then doctor number three comes down here and you've got the the white of the shirt is still in here and the same sort of uh, the red that was in his little pocket is now the main red on his vest then you come down to this guy down here and of course he pulls in all of the colors that was in that doctor this one goes to a hat that one goes to a hat this one comes over here and he's got the striped pants and this guy's got the striped pants then you come back over here this guy's got the yellow and all the bright colors he's got the yellow in his shirt then you've got the red for his little tie and his red for his little ascot up here. You've got the black of his jacket. Then you've got the black of, of Nine's jacket. Then you come over here. I'm trying to get this so you can see. The, then you've got his 
pants are, th are this gray that goes to Ten's pants that are up here. Then you've got, again, the red of the little tie ascot, and you've got the red over here of his bow tie and his fez and his suspenders. And then 12 has, again, the red that comes through from over here. And when you go from 12 down to one again, you've got the gray in his pants isn't the gray of his jacket. Yeah, I'm kind of stretching it, I know, but I think it's kind of cool. Wow, the lighting is awful today. Sorry. So yep, I will get him finished. He will be a Christmas gift under the tree, which means I will have three stitchy Christmas gifts under the tree this year. Yay! So that's about it. <laughs> as far as my whips go. Um, we'll see. This one will get done because Christmas is this week and I will get it done. And like I said, we're gonna, when Teresa and I go out Christmas shopping today, we are going to find the clock mechanism for it so I can put it all together. Um, then the other two would be great if I finish them this week. If not, I still have a little bit of time after this week to get them done. So. Then I have my stash acquisitions. This week, um, I did get a few things in. Uh, first thing that I got was the newest issue of the February 2016 issue of uh, Just Cross Stitch Magazine. One of my, this one and Cross Stitch Needlework are my two favorite subscriptions to get. I've got several pieces um, planned for next year out of both of those magazines. But just to show you guys a couple of things, this is the new, a new Seasons uh, series that's going to come out in 2016. The Seasons in Chalk. I like this one a lot. This is what it's based on a work of art that was actually a chalk drawing and then it's translated into cross stitch. Isn't that cool? So there's the winter one and I'm sure we'll get spring, summer, and fall later. I'm trying to show a couple ones that I liked a lot in here. Da -da -da. Oh, here's one. Um, this is by Ursula Michael, cross stitch lover. I think that's a must for everybody. I don't think I will put it in for my year of starts next year, but it'll be kept for 2017. Which I'm telling you right now, I could do another year of starts in 2017. How crazy is that? Then, let's see, where did that part go? There's lots of great patterns in here. I'm not showing them all because I'm just not. So there is one other thing I wanted to show off. Here it is, favorite finds. I just wanted to give a shout out to Liz and the Dragonfly Lotus Designs uh, bit that was in here this month, because Dragonfly Lotus rocks. It's awesome. I have used a lot of it for Garrett's Snow White piece, like I've said. It's just, it's awesome. But it's a great magazine. Here's the whole project gallery for this year, or this month. Lots of great projects in here. So yeah, yay! Then um, I got the last bit of what I needed for January's Year of Starts threads. I ordered these a long time ago but you're gonna see the, from Stitching Bits and Bobs, um, almost everything except for two needlepoint ink silks are special ones that had to be ordered. So here is, um, or not needlepoint ink, here is Swald Algiers. This one is color 4124, which is a brown. And then this one's 4122, which is another brown. So got those. Then I have um, the Access Bijou MMT in 452, which is green agate. It's a really pretty green floss. Then the rest of this is Gloriana, and this is all for Vintage Stitches by Jeanette Douglas. Um, you're going to see the same color in lots of different capacities. So this is um, Gloriana in the Luminescence. And this is Highland Garden, Highland Garden Dark, which is the same color you're gonna see several times because this color features prominently in this piece, but in different ways. And it's just so pretty. It's so, so pretty. And then I also got uh, a Princess Pearl Petite in Highland Garden Dark. It's just all the different, um, types of flosses with this one color. 
And then I got three of the Lorikeets from Gloriana, which is the wool, which I've never used before for Gloriana. So this is going to be interesting. This is Twilight Dark, which is a purple color. This is going to be interesting to use. This is Spanish Moss, which is a pretty yellowy green. Showing up a little bit brighter on camera, but... But these are their nine strand wools. And then, guess what? Highland Garden. <laughs> but not dark. This is just Highland Garden. I just love the Highland Garden. It's so pretty. So that puts all of the flosses that I needed, the last little bits of flosses that I needed for um, that piece. So January is now officially 100% totally kitted up. Um I also got my latest order from Nifty Needle Nannies. <laughs> Julie is so sweet. She sent a candy cane for everyone. She sent me a little note. Um, she did have one of the ones that I ordered that she accidentally left out. So to make up for it, she sent me this pretty little card that I can use and stickers that I haven't shown Teresa yet, but I'm sure when I do, she will steal them. Just as a little thank you and sorry the other one isn't in here and it's coming it's a texans football needle minder it's totally okay but here are the cute adorable needle minders that i got this time this is a gray dove and then there's cindy lou who and a brownie girl scout brownie even though my daughter's a junior now but i couldn't resist then this one has um a penguin uh the Bumblebee Fairy, I Love Coffee, this is Coffee Espresso Latte, and then a cool little The Law badge, which I got in honor of my dad. No, he's not a sheriff, but he is a judge. And then this last little bit, I just, I have plans for these. I know where they're going to go, or some of them. Um, all these cute little travel ones. I love the Playbill. Playbill is awesome. So we got the Playbill, we got a Queen Elizabeth stamp, we got a bottle of champagne, a, st a beer stein, um, I forget the name of the castle, but the castle in Germany that's like Cinderella's castle, and then of course a little pretzel. So yay! And that's it this week. Um, I've got a lot of, uh, I've placed my order for um, my threads for February's Year of Starts stuff. Um, and I've otherwise kitted it all up, so when those threads get in, I'll work on making that video. I also um, will be, and I've been saying this for a while, but the digital pe the digital stash, I it is my goal to try to get an updated video up before the end of this year. Um, so we'll see if that happens. And I will probably do two of them again, one with music, one without, because just watching it without music is a little creepy to me, even though I know it's necessary for some people, just because of YouTube stuff. So I will probably do that before the end of the year. Um, and then I just wanted to also mention, I am using, we've talked about the X-Stitch app before. I know Kaylin Mazio has done a tutorial on it. It's been talked about by all sorts of places. I'm really using it a lot more than I was before. I have done some revisions to my journal and my wish list is now going to be all of my planned year of starts. And then, of course, I will move them to kitted when I've got them kitted up and then started once they're started. Hopefully, we finish at some point. I'm using the shopping list a lot more. Um, I am clearing out what I had in there as far as my inventory of flosses and fabrics and charts and stuff. And then I'm going to be going through and actually doing a better inventory now that I have so many of the weeks and the classic color works and the ghast and all that to make sure I have it so I don't always have to come upstairs to pick it up to go through. Um, but, you know, it, it's an awesome app. So if you haven't gotten it yet, go find it. It's great. Anyway, that's about it for me this week. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Stitchy week. If you celebrate, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. If you don't, I hope you have a wonderful week anyway. Um, and I will try to get in this week for uh, the Stitch Along update. Um, that'll probably be Wednesday, unless I get caught up and do seven hours by Tuesday, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll figure it out. Uh, so either Tuesday or Wednesday, I will get back with you guys for that video. Then uh, my, no my next video will be on Sunday. Shouldn't be a problem. I'll do it in the early in the morning before I go to another family Christmas on Sunday. Um, we've got lots of, we've got my mom's side of the family, 
us, my my mom, my immediate family, my mom and dad, my brother and my sister, and then my dad's side of the family. <laughs> Christmas galore. But it's fun. I'm excited. So anyway, hope you guys have a great week and I will see you guys next time.